Hello and welcome to episode 5 of FRC Java Tutorials. I'm Alan Oden, lead programmer for Team 3313 for the 2013 build season. And I'm Dalton Neer, and I am the other uh, lead programmer on the team. Okay. Uh, this episode we're going to be covering uh, defining your camera, which in this case we're going to be using access cameras, how you actually using and manipulating the data you get from the camera, and actually uploading your code to your bot. We're just going to jump straight in here by defining the camera. Again, this is defined a lot like most other objects in FRC Java. Start out with access camera. We're just going to name this camera, obviously, because it's a camera. I want to you're going to want to define this by typing dot get instance here. This just, uh, since there's no way to actually define it like you do up here, you have to do it like this. Now, alternatively, you could put in the IP address of the camera, but we're just going to go through this, assuming you leave it in the standard port of dot 11 for the final. Good. Okay, so what we're going to want to do here is first, we're going to uh, put uh, a button to uh, grab the current frame that the uh, camera is showing. So uh, in one second here we'll have a button set up to take a, to grab <clears throat> the current picture. Again, depending on your joystick, you're going to want to have a different button that I'm going to put in here. Okay, so uh, obviously as you probably know, when the, the, buttons, the button 7 is pressed, it will uh, grab a picture. So we're going to want to create a new method. And, okay, we're going to name it center calculation. Now in here, when you just do it like this, uh, depending on your IDE, it might not let you do what I'm going to do right here. I'm going to click on this little light bulb here, and it's going to create this for us. It's going to put it down here. Okay, um, <coughs> so this is just a, a, a private void method, which is pretty standard. Okay, so you're going to need to declare a couple things. First, you're going to need color image, uh, and then the variable name, we're going to call it image. And you're going to want to set this to null for right now. This is the, obviously the image that you're getting. Um, you're going to need a binary image. Um, call, we'll call this one a threshold image, and again, it needs to be centered. Or, uh, it needs to be uh, set equal to null. We, and again, you're just going to make sure you fix all of your imports. Control Shift I, or at least in this IDE. Yeah, case. in NetBeans. Um, and then we're also going to need another binary image called big objects image. And we'll explain what all these mean, why we have these named the way they are later. Yep, just right now, uh, just just trust me on this. You're going to, okay, so uh, big object image. So we'll, I think we'll call it uh, one word. Oh, yep. <laughs> Again, set to null. And then one, or we're going to need two more, I guess. Uh, binary image, another binary image. This one will be called convex hull image. Hopefully you're getting some kind of idea by uh, just a variable name. And then one more binary image called <coughs> a filtered image. And again, we need to set it to null. Uh, of course, setting it to null will help uh, us uh, avoid errors and such. Okay, so what we're going to... Okay, so if you've ever had any experience in Java or not, um, this try catch is really weird. So we're going to want a try statement here. What this is going to do is it's going to attempt to do this. What it's going to do is if it's successful, it will run everything from the try uh, bracket to the catch bracket. If it cannot, uh, obviously um, an error is going to be thrown, and what uh, it, the error is going to be caught by the caught, and then it's going to catch whatever type of uh, exception you have um, in your parentheses. In this case, exception ex is any possible exception that could possibly be thrown. Um, and then between, and then after the catch, the the, the uh, bracket before that, and finally, is what you're going to do with uh, that error. And in this case, we're going to do nothing with it because it really has no significant use to us right now. You could log it if you really cared uh, to know what it was or what was causing it. For right now, we don't care. We don't, it doesn't matter. So. Um, I hope that makes sense. And if you run into something where it makes you add a try catch, it'll have something in here that will print what's wrong down here once you actually execute your code. Okay, so um, now let's get into doing this. Okay, so first we're going to need to do image equals camera.getImage. 
obviously if you can't figure it out that just sets our image to uh, whatever uh, frame is in the camera at that given moment okay and then we are going to want threshold image equals threshold image oh, or no uh, image I mean image dot uh, threshold RGB RGB we don't want that one okay and then there's going to be see three there's going to be six things in here what these are are the um, the red maximum tolerance the red or the red minimum tolerance red maximum tolerance green minimum tolerance green maximum tolerance a blue minimum tolerance and blue maximum tolerance I believe I said that correctly that was a lot. yes I did okay so what we're uh, we're <clears throat> the way we're setting this up right now is if you are using a green light on your camera to detect something, because uh, 255 would be full green at max, and oh. okay. So uh, like I said, we're using a green light, and uh, that will set the threshold image to only the green stuff. Then, okay. Uh, the next thing you're gonna want to do is a big objects image. Uh, uh, so big objects equal. Uh, Threshold image dot remove small objects, and then there will be uh, two arguments: a boolean and an integer. And you're going to want to set this to false. And um, two, I believe, is a. Uh... Okay, so the two arguments, um, yeah, false, is uh, just just you want to set to false. And then two is the erosions in the picture, which is the little things in the image. Uh, it's actually two represents their size. So uh, we found out that two works best for uh, most stuff. I would recommend using that. Otherwise, just try testing out with it. Okay, moving on. The next one, the next line, you're going to want a convex hull image equals a big uh, objects image uh, dot dot convex hull uh, true, which uh, this will is essentially going to fill in uh, rectangles created. This this should be false, not true. Sorry. Or false. Um, and like I said, that will uh, fill in the rectangles that are created by uh, j j essentially making it easier on uh, you to detect the things you're looking for. Okay, for this next step, we're going to need to add a criteria collection, which is just a way of filtering out other specific objects here. You're going to want to define this up here with all your other variables. Uh, criteria collection. Again, fix all your imports. And now inside your robot in it, you're, you're going to want to put, uh, you want to set the criteria. We need to define this as a new criteria collection. Uh, Alright, so this next line, uh, okay, you're still defining it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, wait one second for you. Okay, now we need to, to define the some of the criteria that needs to be met. So uh, the add uh, cc dot add criteria, and I vision uh, measurement type dot uh, all that stuff with for the first one, and uh, there will be two uh, more argument. There will be three more arguments after that. The next two are the uh, for Okay, uh, the, these two need to be the minimum and maximum width of uh, your image. So uh, for our particular one, we have 30 and 400. And then we need our last bar variable to be false. And, and that's not of the image, that's of the rectangle that exactly. we're trying to find. Um, I don't think we've mentioned this yet, sorry. This is some of the code that is for the 2012 game, Rebound Rumble. This is to find the rebound area on the basket. Yes. Itself. Uh, this is assuming that you're using a green light on your bot to reflect off of the reflective tape. And then for, uh, we're going to need one more line because we already have width. We're going to need to do height. And the height is almost identical except obviously you need to, the measurement type of height. And um, the, the measurement uh, is 40 and 400. And in case you're wondering, those are in pixels, uh, nothing else. So be sure to check what kind, of, how many pixels per inch your uh, camera can do, because obviously that is all totally dependent on what, what uh, kind of camera you have. And th these are configured for a standard Axis camera, so if you're using one of them, it should be fine. But if you're using something else, some of the code is going to be a little bit different. Okay, so now continuing on with uh, our center calculate. 
All right, we're going to take the filtered image, and we're going to set it to uh, the convex hull image, and we're going to do a particle filter on it. And what this is going to do is it's going to take that uh, frame image, whatever you wish to call it, and um, it's going to put it through our filter. Uh, again, so it fit, fits uh, the area that we uh, had told it to filter. Next, we're going to create a particle analysis report. And it, uh, this, is going to be an, uh, <laughs> this is going to be an array. And we will name it reports. And we're going to uh, set it equal to the filtered image dot get ordered particle analysis report reports and, and what this does is this simply grabs every green rectangle that your camera can see that's within the sizes that we defined earlier okay okay for uh, now we're gonna want to do something with our reports so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a for statement here which uh, we're gonna do for int i equals zero uh, I is less than reports dot length plus one. And we'll explain this once we get done with this right here, too. And then you're going to need I plus uh, plus, which, for you don't know, is the shorthand for take the number, add one, set it to itself. Okay. And now what this does here is integer I equals zero. The way arrays work is that the first number in an array is zero. It's the zeroth set. So... Essentially, zero is your first counting number, then. Yes. It, it doesn't start with one. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to print the middle of the box that you it finds. A, or, um, or whatever uh, <clears throat> your, your, your center mass is. OK, and uh, the <clears throat> I in there is just uh, representing the um, whichever number array or part of the array it is. So if it's uh, when i is 1, so when uh, i is equal to 0 right up for the first time it runs through a statement, it'll be this, the 0th position in the array, or for the next time when it's 1, it'll be um, the report, the first, uh, the position 1 in the array. It'll get the center mass of that one. Okay, so now we're going to go through uploading your code to your bot. This computer is not actually... Ooh, thank you for pointing that out. Um, with the way that uh, FRC Java is set up, it's based off of the C family code. So images take up space. Regular Java has garbage collection where it'll clear out the images if they're not being used, but the way this works, you need to do it manually. Okay, it's really simple too. So you're going to um, do filtered image uh, dot free. You're going to do a convex hull image. Oh yeah, you're going to need to surround it with a try catch because there's a possibility that that uh, that it originally did not set it to anything, and uh, that way it's just going to uh, not be able to do it. It's going to throw an exception. You're going to catch it, and you won't have any issues then. And the reason we're doing this outside of the original one is that in case it crashes in the middle. If we were to put these free statements at the bottom here, those would never execute and would just take up extra space. This way, it, even if the first one crashes, it still is allowed to uh, try to free the images. And the last one will be threshold image.free. Oh, wait, there's one more. Then you got to free the original image, mm -hmm. too. This way, you're not going to bog down your your uh, anything, whatever you're running, end up running this on. <clears throat> okay, now we can get to actually uploading your code. Uh, pretty simple. You click this button right here. Um, this computer is not hooked up to the bot right now, so I can't actually show you it executing. But you click this, it'll run through some sample code there, and you'll have it done. You also have to format your CRIO in a way that it'll be able to read Java. I do not have that software installed right now, so I can't actually show you that. But you're going to want to use your CRIO imaging tool. Uh, when you installed the plugin for NetBeans, it should have come with the image that you need. So you just run that, and instead of selecting it to run off of LabVIEW, you select it to run off of Java. After that, uh, it, it's run pretty much the same as LabVIEW. Uh, you open up your dashboard, you drive it the same way you would normally, 
Again, with buttons mapped the way they are. Uh, this is the end of the FRC Java tutorial series. If you have specific questions, uh, leave a comment or send me a message. I'll respond to you. If it's something that I completely forgot about, I'll make a video about it. Um, next week, I'm going to start doing basic Java tutorials to kind of help expand on the basics of what we're doing right now. Uh, this has been Alan Oden from Team 3313. And Alt Mayor from Team 3313. Uh, happy programming. Yeah. <laughs>